brim to rub it and um, sort of it was kind of like a coin toss where where we wanted to sink the first ten the first test unit. And again, these test units are little tiny 50 by 50 centimeter, really quick and easy units. This young lady is another archaeologist that I've been working with. We, she's very familiar with these. We've got probably 60 of them in the last three days. Um, so we dig, start digging in this very first unit, and the first thing we find is a Native American point from probably about 3,000 years ago. And Tom was standing there at the time, and he was just kind of dumbfounded. He's like, how do you guys figure this stuff out? <laughs> then all of a sudden, underneath that, we start finding 17th century bricks. And we know they're 17th century bricks because the profile of a 17th century brick, if you looked in the exhibit case when you came in this evening, I think we have a couple in there, and they're a lot larger than bricks that you might see today. There were actual standards that were set by guild members in England, and there is a brick standard that dates to the 17th century. And the majority of the bricks made are supposed to be, I don't quote me on the exact measurement, but nine by four by two or four and a half, but they're very, very large brick. And by the close of the 17th century, um, certainly by 1720, these bricks start getting progressively smaller. So 17th century bricks are very easy to pick out from others. So we start finding those, and then that's when things kind of take off on us rapidly. We <clears throat> do what's called, when you drop a test kit in an area, and you find artifacts, and you find concentrations of artifacts, you do what's called an array. In an array, in a kind of a short and quick, dirty way of explaining it uh, without getting technical, is you kind of lay out a star grid. You imagine the points of a star, and you go whatever you decide. Greg's the principal archaeologist of this particular site. I'm his lackey. Um, so what we did was we decided, I think it was, to do a half meter array around the original Bit. And this is what we start picking up. We're picking up rubble. Uh, and this is um, just the local uh, field stone that's coming out of the glacial moraine that they're using probably at this point. We don't know what we're looking at, but we're guessing it's demo uh, footings for a foundation. Um, so this, we keep expanding this unit and we're finding a lot of demolition material. Um, very few artifacts. We found a, you know, a couple of random pieces of 17th century and 18th century pottery, a few pipe stems, but nothing really terribly exciting. You get kind of used to finding that stuff. Um, but you can just kind of put it in but then we start finding stuff that's in its original situation. It's got some form to it. It's starting to look like something. It's not just rubble. It's starting to look like there's a piece of something that was built here at some point. Um, and again, this is these units are all expansions on those original test bits. And you can see, even though well, maybe not from the back of the room, but on this side of the unit, um, the little arrow is indicating north, um, but there's an odd lot of brick rubble full of clamshell mortar that's starting to come out of the soil as well. So now we know we're definitely in the proximity of a house. We're not just working in a rubble pile outside of the proximity of a house. And so, um, Good, explain this one. Yeah, this is horrible. Um, one of the great things about archaeology <laughs> is um, nine times out of ten when you make an interpretive guess, you're going to be wrong. Um, and, uh, the uh, good archaeologists, even 
if any of you are familiar with archaeology, there's probably one of the more famous historic archaeologists in the States, anyway, is Ivor Noel Hume. And he was very good about, um, he would just immediately start making these really grand assumptions and start deciding he knew exactly what he was doing. And then three days later, he would find out he was absolutely dead wrong. But he was very good about being kicked under the bus. He was um, very good about laughing at himself. Um, and we kind of fell into the same trap. We'd start pontificating to Tom, telling him we knew what we were doing. And then a few days later, we'd have to tell him that, um, yeah, uh, no, we're not anywhere close to what we thought. But at one point, we actually got um, kind of uh, courageous enough to, we really thought we had this thing nailed. We knew what we were doing. Uh, we weren't idiots. So we go ahead and we lay out what we think are the contours of the house based on pretty minimal evidence. And even still today, Craig and I were looking at these photographs a few weeks ago. And it was like, what were we thinking? And immediately we both looked at, what do you mean, what were we thinking? You know, it's your idea. <laughs> understand this house and try to figure out where it is, we need to find this, the heart of the household, the heart. Um, and that's what we start looking for. And again, based on theory, conjecture, it turns out to be nothing. We start um, doing arrays again. We went way outside the site and started doing parameter tests. We kept getting in closer and closer. It's like concentric circles, and um, working off the little foundation bits that we found. Um, because we knew immediately if you're not finding anything, that's good. That's as important as finding something. Um, and the idea was, if we find nothing, we'll work closer to something, and then we're going to find that heart. And we're going to blow this site right out of the water. It's not going to fool us we did that for two summers. <laughs> um, they didn't but, find a heart. <laughs> absolutely nowhere. Um, and then um, we had this one weekday. A local school group wanted to come and visit the site. And we had pretty much, again, talked about moronic, we had backfilled almost the entire site. Um, why, I, can't, I don't even want to talk about but so. <laughs> Craig and I show up, and these kids are going to be showing up to this site in like half an hour. And we have absolutely nothing to show them and nothing to talk about. <laughs> and Craig's like, well, we know we found a bunch of stuff over here, so why don't we will, you know, hurry up, we'll just dig a, you know, a half meter pit, and I'm sure we'll find some bricks and stuff. They're kids, they're not going to care. So, that's what we do. We just, again, it's a coin toss. And, okay, we're going to dig this hole right here. No reason, rhyme or reason or anything for it. So we do, and the kids start showing up, and immediately we start hitting this brickwork that's in its original situation. And Craig and I are looking at each other, and he's like, oh my God. He's like, what do you think this is? And I said, well, right now, it looks like that poorly laid sidewalk. Uh, but so the kids come and go, and we're here we're standing there looking at these bricks that are definitely laid in a fashion. They're laid by somebody that knows masonry. And um, so we go back and we start working with the brickwork that we found. And this is just showing you again, this is um, coming off where that last bit of rubble was. And this is turning out to be an addition or an L on 
part of the house. It's a stone, rather wide stone courting. It's almost 18 inches. Um, but that's um, another uh, part of the house. <coughs> that's just uh, another American shot. Mm -hmm. Oh, and one of the things that we did, um, the other thing that's kind of nice to find is material culture is always great to find because it does help you better understand what going on on the site, what people are reading, even to a degree what kind of financial status they're in by the valuation of the material of the pottery they have on the site, the silver, the cutlery, things like that. And in most of these sites, the, especially the first period sites, there aren't concentrations that's scattered. They just throw stuff out doors and windows uh, into the yard. Uh, but what we do find um, just off the corner of what we at one point, we had the yellow tape was actually just over here somewhere, which we thought was the corner of the house, which wasn't. Um, but there's a little tiny shallow depression. I think it was probably a lot of the livestock back then was free roaming. It wasn't fenced. Um, and the depression to me, I have chickens in my backyard, looked very much like a chicken, like they scratch these holes looking for bugs and stuff, and then later on they use them as a dusting bin to get mites and things off them. But here's a shallow depression, and you see it a lot on uh, historic sites, those depressions get filled with trash. People intentionally throw garbage in to fill up that depression. So this is just the beginning. Here in the south side of the unit, you can see what eventually turns out to be a, a calf's jaw. It's up in the uh, little exhibit upstairs. Uh, but in this little trash unit, um, this depression, we were finding um, pottery. We found pottery, and I think it might have been a spoon, I can't remember. But there are a lot of stuff in there. Oh, and a horse bridle. Um, Pardon me, but it's all kind of mid-17th century stuff. Um, so that is, again, stuff we're looking for. But our main focus right now is structure, not material culture. This we hit before we hit the um, brickwork that I was telling you about when the school kids came. And this is another really horrible story. Um, <laughs> Greg and I find this towards the end of the, I think it was the first season, and this is after we spent all summer basically digging through rubble. And we look at this, and you can see in the side wall, it's just, it's kind of like an archaeological site in Boston or something. It's just pure rubble. It's like trying to uh, dig through concrete. It's, it's horrible stuff. And at the bottom, we find these two big flags. It's and I looked at Craig, I said, that's the heart. And he's like, no, you're full of it. There's no way. And look, it's broken and it's kind of at an angle. And in this unit, a bunch of stuff is put in. Um, but so it did kind of look like it was in a context of discarded rubble. Um, but I wasn't convinced. It's, you know, it happens all the time. So anyway, we backfill this. We cover it over. And, going to come back next summer, so we cover it right up. And then the kids come. This is just showing more of the rubble we were digging through, and this is the, these are more test units. We're following this foundation, and eventually, I think we have photographs of it. You'll see an outline of the L coming off the house itself. Um, <clears throat> but here it is. This is more of that foundation that um, is eventually going to be totally Right, yeah, and this area up here is where ultimately, you can see how close we got to the heart. These, didn't are, find it. these are test units that we did. And one of them, when we finally um, do uncover the heart, we uncover our backfill test unit from the summer before. And I'm like, oh my God, we were like within six inches of finding the heart. And we dropped 